Well, I mean, you got chicken fingers, you got the <laughs> I, I want the root of making sure I had the hamburger. So tell me about you guys. What you doing these days? Why don't you share about your passion of sports? I'm playing AAU basketball right now. Are you really? Are you guard? Yes, sir. Now, what grade are you in? Seventh grade. Seventh grade. Right now, I'm just doing basketball, playing guard on the JV team for my school. How right, about in school? How are y'all doing in school? You should tell the president about the school. Favorite thing about it is the business academy I'm in. We get to like travel, so we've been to like NC State, uh, Wake Tech, and we. You're we, kidding me. Yeah, we went to this small dry cleaning business, and it's just it's cool. It's a great experience. I'm well, impressed. Is that a new program in the school? Yes, sir. It is. It just started, just a couple of years ago. You know how much this guy loves you. You can just feel it, can't you? Yes, yeah, sir. Your dad jumped in front of a bull for you. By the way, we dads are hard to raise. Once you're a teenager, we're hard to raise. So you got to be patient with us, you know what I mean? Welcome back, everybody. Simple Son here. Um, since Joe Biden's too busy sitting around feeding fried chicken to a bunch of black folks, I guess he's too dumb to realize that basically him and his administration have implemented a new form of indentured servitude. We have a clip outside of Boston of a black Haitian family, essentially Ill illegally immigrated here, is now basically trading their housework and services for food and lodging from this very, very nice white woman. You know, thank you, the Democratic Party. You'll only see here on NBC10 Boston, a migrant family from Haiti is sharing their experience. They're searching for shelter in the Boston area and then recently found a host home in Brookline. And now they're looking for jobs. As NBC10's Aaron Logan reports, they say these last few weeks have been life-changing. And It's been an emotional few weeks for Wildande Joseph and her husband. First, sleeping on the floor at Logan Airport, then in Children's Hospital with their two-year-old daughter who got very sick. Me siento mal. Es más muy difícil este tiempo. Oh. She felt bad, as any mother would. Now things are looking much brighter as they've been welcomed into Lisa Hillenbrand's Brookline apartment. Tu niña es muy alegre ahora. Sí, muy alegre. Cuando se levanta en la mañana, se dice, ay, Lisa. She says her daughter is very happy. When she wakes up in the morning, she says, hi, Lisa, and everyone starts the day smiling. It's a delight, and it's really fun having them. What I realized is there's so much prejudice against refugees, mostly because people don't know them. Lisa says she feels like she has her own personal chef, as Wildande loves cooking. Te gusta la ocupación? Sí. In fact, her goal is to open up her own restaurant. Que lo tiene mi propio restaurante. The couple has their work permits and they've been taking English classes. Yo cualquier trabajo va a hacer para guardar mi dinero para para hacer mi futuro. They're open to work anywhere to save money for their future. In the meantime, they're enjoying their time with Lisa, their new friend for life, and their daughter's new grandmother. Se abuela mi mi niña. They are hard working. They want to learn. They want to be successful. And I feel great helping, and I get to understand the refugee crisis from the inside. Lisa says she's so impressed by the number of people she's met right here at Brookline Town Hall meetings who've been stepping up and hosting families. She's hopeful more will do the same in the coming days and weeks. In Brookline, Aaron Logan, NBC10 Boston. Really? Oh, my God. I gotta be honest. It, it's it's. The, I would feel so uncomfortable. What the f is happening? What is going on in this world? How can anybody who votes for the Democratic Party not look at that and go, "That just looks bad. It just it just feels it just feels bad it, innately, doesn't it? Could you, as a as as a white person or any person for that matter, say, "Look, these individuals." who look totally different to me, who speak a different language, let me put them to work in my house, you know, for food and lodging. You know, I'm, and then, then have the, the gall they get on TV and say, I'm making their life better. Look at me, I'm giving them some place to live. They're so hardworking. They want to learn, they want to do this, they want to do that. 
Lady, don't you see that it's just a new form of indentured servitude that you are basically promoting on live television? How in the world can we allow this to happen? It's bad enough that we have this mass illegal immigration issue. Now we're dropping off illegal immigrants to people's homes so they can put a little bit of work in? Give them a little bit of elbow grease? Is this what it is? The President of the United States is stopping at chicken spots to, to, to bring some fried chicken over to get the black vote? Uh, while simultaneously dropping off illegal immigrants to people's houses so they can wash their clothes? What what world are we living in where they, this, it, it feels like there's zero accountability? It, it I feel like we're living in this, this alternate universe with this, it, like everything is, is through a Saturday Night Live skit. It does. It truly feels that way. Doesn't it feel like that to you? I mean, we literally just watched... It. Very professionally done news article, news story, really just telling the story of how this, this, you know, these, they're, they're just coming together as one big family. But she likes it that she's her personal chef. It makes her feel as if she has a personal chef. It saddens me to think that this world is so naive and so blind that our people, our own U.S. citizens are so blind to what's actually going on. The Democratic Party acts like you're f their friend. Freedom, yay, freedom this, freedom that. But it's not really freedom. It's a false choice they're giving you. To be true, you have a lot of feckless Republicans as well. I mean, a whole host of them. You true, you, they're, they're literally all politicians. But to actually sit back and say that this was a good idea to do, to implement... I mean, there was another story as well of another family that, that said, yeah, we, they, you know, and they can, I'll take a couple immigrants in. And then like an hour later, you know, government agencies just dropped off a bunch of people at their house. Th this is only going to get worse. Actually, in fact, we have another clip of uh, a councilwoman that's actually talking as if this is a good idea. Um, Wellesley... Brookline, you know, cities and towns that have so much more resources um, than the city of Boston. Boston City Councilwoman Julia Mejia thinks more migrants can be placed outside of Boston. I think everybody needs to start opening up their doors because this is a shared responsibility. Controversy over the placement of surging immigrants comes as a new report links immigrants who settle in Massachusetts to economic benefits for the region. Now you see that. Um, this Boston councilwoman is talking about how everybody needs to open their doors and they need to do more. It feels like this, sir, there's a push for forced assimilation. N not just ass assimilation, but basically an infestation. They want to push everybody into so intricate into these crevices of our society that it would be hard to pull them out. Is she opening her doors? Is anybody else on their council? Is it, What other Democrats, what Democratic politician that you know of? Is AOC or anybody else? Anybody from the squad opening their doors up and inviting strange illegal immigrants into their homes? Are they doing this? No, they're not doing this. They want you to do this, but they don't want to do it themselves. It's a sad existence that we live in that you're tr these people have, even in the best of intentions, they have traveled here, came here illegally, and now they want to plant roots into our country. Again, I feel bad for their situation, but guess what? We're eventually going to have a bad situation ourselves. At what point do we not try to save ourselves? When a plane's going down, they say, you put the mask on yourself before you help anybody else. We need to put the mask on. We need help. Our people are struggling. They cry out every day. Complaining about the cost. At some point, we're going to have a staggering depression. A staggering number of people who are homeless or are hungry that are American citizens. We won't be able to help anybody else out. We're going to wind up failing. There's going to be a, a mass extinction of the American way. Faster than we've ever seen in our entire lives. Or any lives. Empires fall. They rise and they fall. But if you can save it from falling, that would be ideal. Let's try to save our empire. But we need to save our people. We are helping so many other people. I'm not counting tens of billions of dollars overseas to Ukraine and everything else. I mean, and, and it, the hypocrisy on top of it. 
I mean, you see during COVID, the Democratic Party, Nancy Pelosi, all these other people, they weren't running around with masks on. They were, Gavin Newsom, they were having their parties. They were doing their little, whatever their little special things are. But they wanted you to be locked down. They wanted you to stay in place. They wanted you to shove this in your arms. They have no care in the world. Now they're creating a new form of slavery. This should be the straw that broke the camel's back. I mean, it should have happened a long time ago. But this should be the final straw. You should not be voting for the Democratic Party at all. You should be looking into deeper things than, hey, these people are promoting. They're literally promoting indentured servitude at this point. So then you have to ask the question, what if these individuals start acting a fool in your home? Can you just simply kick them out? Do you have to get, do you have to follow the laws of like getting an eviction notice? What, what happens? At what point does it say that this may be a bad idea? This might be a bad idea to do because again, we butt heads already in culture and we're not even living in the same home. So what do you think is going to happen? Eventually, we're going to bump heads. It has to. People are going to feel resentment in some kind of way. I mean, you can kind of, I kind of seen it in that woman's face. You know, she had a camera shoved in her face. And this woman's all, you know, they're in the kitchen together. Yay! While she's simultaneously saying, I'm glad she has a personal chef. So, you know, I think, I think we need to rethink what we're doing. The Democratic Party has created a whole new brand of slavery. So, welcome to New America. Um, hopefully it changes soon. Hopefully it, uh, you don't vote for this again. If you voted for it. Hopefully Trump wins in 2024 and he closes the border. Because that absolutely needs to happen. Including the tens of thousands of Chinese illegal immigrants that are sneaking into this country every single day. So, I'm Simple Son. Hit the like, share, give me a thumbs up, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.